Okay, so the idea is really simple. If I take a ring pull, I place it into my pocket like this. Watch, in slow motion it begins to visually reappear in the deck. <laughs> Remember this image. This is a tab from a soda can. It's gonna go off into my pocket. Now I told you to remember the image. Watch as that tab begins to visually materialize back on top of the deck. Stick around for the rest of this video and I'll teach you how to make this trick. Yo, what's crackalacking folks? Thanks for tuning in for another Tutorial Tuesday. I hope you're all excited to learn how to build this gimmick now. This isn't the easiest gimmick in the world because there's one really fiddly bit, but if you've got patience and you've got some calm, then you're gonna be able to do it. But first of all, I wanna say thank you to each and every one of you for blowing, I say blowing, it's not like a million subscribers, but blowing my channel up. I can't believe the size that it's growing and I appreciate all of you. That's why I'm putting out my A plus material just to you guys. So thank you all so much. Uh, Saturday, I posted a video of another effect and the winner is going to be announced this Saturday coming. It's about seven days to the day. But you all seem to love the idea of winning these gimmicks that we're making. So we're going to run another competition today. Tutorial Tuesday, the winner will be announced in a week. All you have to do to win the actual gimmick from today's video, the very one that we're going to learn to build right now, is hit that subscribe button and share the link to this video on social media. Make sure you tag me so I know that you've shared it and make sure you are subscribed. The winner will be announced in next tutorial Tuesday's video. But again, thank you to each and every one of you. If you've already subscribed, then all you need to do is share the link to this video. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and then share the link to this video on social media to make sure I'm tagged so that I can see it. And you're gonna win the actual gimmick from today's video. I'm gonna post it to wherever you are in the world, no restrictions. So, with all that being said and done, get ready to learn today's trick. I, and I will just quickly say, this is perfect for social media, but like any of you out there that perform my trick called Acme Hole, I know that so many of you actually perform that in the real world, and this effect is very akin to Acme Hole in terms of the build and the gimmick and what uh, how much it can be observed by a layman. So. For all you that perform Acme Hole out there in the real world, and I know there's hundreds of you that literally do it in your walk around gigs, then this is very similar to that in terms of how much, how closely it could be looked at. But with all that being said and done, let's dive into building this gimmick. Okay, so this is everything you're gonna need to make this appearing ring pull gimmick. Now, what I've got is some sticky, shiny, this is like a little silver reflective sticker, like a little mirror sticker. Uh, but if you don't have that, you can use some kitchen foil, or as the Americans say, aluminum. Aluminium is the correct way to say it. <laughs> I've got uh, three playing cards, and again, you don't have to use playing cards. You can use other objects. I just know that they're the most universal objects to use when teaching uh, how to build gimmicks. But you could use dollar bills or chewing gum packets, anything that, anything that has a slightly, you know, camouflaged back or design to it. I've got some of this elastic thread which I love to use. As you know, if you watch the other videos, we use this all the time. So this is some uh, prim invisible elastic thread. I get this as thin as I can get it. I know there's been some questions whether it's the 0.5 mil or 0.7. Um, I got, I've had this for so long because it just never runs out that I don't know which size it is, but I know that I picked the smallest when I was ordering it. Uh, but just go for any size that fits you. A ring pull, obviously for, I got this from a Diet Pepsi, but you can get it from any other. I've got a piercing object, you can just use a safety pin, just be careful with it. And I got a pair of scissors. Now please, if you're under 18, then please seek help from a parent or guardian, it's really important that you do that. So this is how it's gonna work. We're gonna, first of all, and this is the bit that you probably need to do first. I've actually cut out the shape of a ring pull into the playing card design. Now what I used is a plotter, a plotting device. It's called a cricut or cry cut, some people call it. Um, and I, I put the, just put a ring pull design on there and cut this out. But you can actually do it with a craft knife, a sharp craft knife. Again, uh, you don't 
if you're under 18, then please get a parent to help you. But I've cut that shape out into a position on the playing card. If you notice, and I'll try and be careful, I've the reason that these pieces are still able to be here is because I haven't cut this thin stem off the design, okay? So that's probably the hardest thing. With a plotter, it just did the work for me. And a plotter is a, is a, is a machine that will cut it out for you. Um, but I've actually made a couple of these by hand. It's just I find this one to be a bit more accurate. What we're going to do is make a sliding gimmick, as you know we love sliding gimmicks here. So I'm going to line the cards up to find out which card sits best, because some of them might be misaligned like this if they're off printed, but that looks all right to me. Let's see this way. Yeah, so that way it's really off, but this way around, this orientation is good. So what I'm going to do is create a piece of card that is going to, I'm going to cut a load off this card and then create a piece that can slide up and back here. So it only needs to be the size of the ring pull. So let's see, that's literally about, just about this area of the of the angel. So what I'm gonna do is I can be quite generous here. And I, I'm gonna to wanna to keep a, quite a bit of the card on the sides because we're gonna to need to sort of grip onto this card later on. Here. Yeah. And get rid of the border just like that. Okay. As you can see. And in essence, what's going to happen is that this is going to slide and cover the angel. Alright. Now, <clears throat> I don't want to use all of this, I only need to use a small piece. So let's just measure how much I need. If I go here, and then I can see if I put like a small, I don't want to use it all. I'm just going to mark sort of where is it? There. I'm going to cut this piece out. Actually, do you know what? I'll do it just down in the middle. Okay. Now, I'm going to apply this silver piece right here. And I wonder, this may have lost its stick over the years, so I might have to use some double stick tape, but I believe it should be alright. Yeah, I'm just going to lost this stick a little bit so I'm going to use some, um, I think I'll use a little bit of rubber cement just to stick that down. Okay so if you don't have rubber cement you can just go ahead and use any glue stick or double sided tape but for the sake of making this fairly solid on the card I'm going to use some um, Elmer's rubber cement. Most magicians you guys will have this already. Do you want to get all the corners? Now you'll notice I'm sticking it right towards the edge of this card. That's because when the secret slide in motion happens, you don't want any blue design showing as it slides into position. I might trim that off in a moment to see. And once we've done this, we're pretty much uh, halfway there. Now we just need to make this slide back and forth. Okay, so let me see. I can tell that this line runs across. That's the edge of where the cut ends. So I know that my foil, when it's dead center, so I know that my foil needs to go just beyond that. <clears throat> So let's make it here. Now, what's nice is that we don't have to be too accurate with this because we're not trying to match the back design. We're just trying to get it to slide into place. So we can be quite liberal with it. And just to make sure, if I slide this back, 
Yeah, that's okay. I'm making sure I'm making sure that it's too not too long and it's gonna slide and cover this, but it's all good. So if I go here, just look at this, and use these borders as a guide to make sure it's all in the right place. And I'm gonna make four holes. So one, two, three. And again, just be careful that you, that you don't stab yourself. <laughs> that would be terrible. So now I'm going to take some thread. And I just use loads of this stuff. I don't care because I've had this thread ring for years and it just never seems to go down. Cut it. And now we're going to tie the thread around lengthways through two holes at a time. So this is literally like tying your shoelaces. Um, what I do is I like to have the knot tied on the front of this card, so that that way it doesn't. The knot can sometimes cause friction, basically, um, on the gimmick, and you don't want that to happen. So if the knot's on the other side where it's not sliding, then it doesn't cause as many problems. So I'm just going to thread it through. It's kind of hard to do this on camera, but I'm as you can imagine, it's literally like thread in, it is just thread in a needle. One, two, and you'll see that I'm going along the card. All right, I'm not going across it. So one, two, and now I'm gonna go down. Try and find. I don't know how hard this is to do this and not mouth breathe so heavy. <laughs> Okay, so now I've threaded it. I'm literally gonna tie a knot in the card. And the way to do this is a double knot. So a standard double knot, but I'm gonna tie it once on the face. All right. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to sort of keep the first knot taut. And I'm gonna tie that second knot around. And it's really hard to show this on camera, but I'm gonna tie that second knot around my pinky whilst placing pressure down on that first knot. And that allows me to get a nice tight double knot you don't because sometimes with this thread you can end up tying the knot like quite far away from the thread and that's uh and then that makes it not very springy once i've done that anyway i'm, I'm gonna cut off the excess thread okay so here make sure I always make sure to not cut the knot off as I've done that before it's such a pain in the ass because you just have to re-thread it and do it again so that's one and now I'm gonna thread the other side and tie the other side so let's get the thread again and again we'll tie it's not just like the first one. Now you have your gimmick. So this will slide back and forth. And with this on top, if I grab a deck, for some reason in testing right here, I'm finding that my gimmick is catching on my cutout. So when this is here, it's catching on the cutout. So if, if you have, are having this problem now, it's strange I haven't had this issue before. So I'm, I'm not sure if it's because of this sticker and I've used aluminum, but um, either way, what you can do, I, I've got a, a phantom card from Joshua J. <laughs> That's right, it's hard to focus on that, something clear. I've got a phantom card from Joshua J, but you could just take some tape but I'm just gonna apply that under here and that will stop, that will keep it smooth to stop it from, to stop it from catching. So all I'm gonna do is take some magic tape. And all these things, although it may seem like a pain, they're interesting to know for when you make future gimmicks, the little tips and tricks that you can use to get yourself out of trouble and to help you improvise to make gimmicks work that potentially may have failed otherwise. So let me show you this basic overview of how this can work. Uh, what I'm gonna do is pull this back and essentially slowly let it 
slide forward, giving this illusion that the ring pull grows on the card. And to do that, I place the gimmick on top, and I'm going to bring this back like a trigger, and squeeze down. So I place it here, and I squeeze down with my thumb, and I use my pinky at the back to stop the gimmick card sliding back, because it'll try to do that. And now if I just slowly release the pressure, and you have to practice this a little bit, I can get that ring pull to sort of grow and melt into view, just like this. So you want to get the right light on there, but with that all being said and done, let's go ahead and learn how to perform this. So here's how to perform the effect. Now, I've realized just since coming to make the gimmick that uh, instead of having my pinky there, and it's all these little tweaks you make along the way which are important. But instead of putting my pinky at the back to stop this card from wanting to slide away, I've added some double stick tape to the front edge of this entire gimmick. And that way it all now doesn't need me to use my pinky. Which is just a little tip, but you might find it helpful. I'm also trying to find the best light to make that ring pull pop as much as it can. So what you do, you get yourself a ring pull. And you're going to be using some psychology in this effect uh, to, to condition your audience to, to, to see something which doesn't look that normal. Now all I'm going to do is tilt the gimmick up. So I'm going to tilt the first part up. I'm going to bring back the slide. Okay, so this is the elastic slide. I'm going to bring that back, allow this to drop down, and I'm going to pin it with my thumb. Like that. All right. Now I'm going to line the ring pull up above the cutout, like this, and I can begin. What I say is very simple. I just say, I want you to remember this image when I show the ring pull. And now I'm gonna tip it out onto my hand, right? So the condition to see this, because this is an odd image just in general to, to a regular person. I'm gonna tip this ring pull genuinely into my hand like that, okay? Now when I come back, everything looks normal. I'm going to pretend to place the ring pull into my pocket, but really I'm going to just hold it between my third and second knuckle of my middle finger as I pretend to place it there. Okay, and then I just come away casually like this. Now all I do is bring this back into the same position as I held earlier. And I release that tension slowly, and you'll see that the ring pull Look, well, it looks like the ring pull, but it's just the metallic mirror piece starts to come into view. And again, you want to find the best light for this. But boom, just like that, it melts all the way back into view. Now, the last thing left to do is to do a, a false pass. You're going to pretend that you're throwing this back. Now, because they've seen this earlier, they're not going to think twice that you're doing it again. So, from here, all I'm going to do is tilt my left hand down and show the ring pull in my right hand. If you want to, you can throw the ring pull up to hit the deck, so it looks like it falls off. But at speed, it appears here, boom, and there's the ring pull. Now, what you can do, there's a few different things you can do. Uh, one of the things is that you can, as you, as you get to your side, you could have a few cards, two cards face down here, when you come to your side, you can push over all three and flip it all over so you can hand the top card out. No one's really looking at the top card though. Or you can literally just have half the deck face around like that. So as you tip it out like this, you can just turn the deck over and show these cards as regular. Or as you hand the ring pull out for examination, you can literally, boom, come here and you say, check out this ring pull. As you come back, you can literally take that card and dump it into your pocket. I'm all about being bold at certain times, and that's one of the times because you've got so much misdirection and cover that you can be like, check out the ring pull and already I can just ditch it in my pocket. But let's see that visual one final time. So I'm gonna set up just like this, activate my gimmick, and now you can say watch. Because that ring pull begins to slowly materialize back on top of the deck. Just like that, you can examine the ring pull. And I kept those two cards face up so my ditch didn't look that good. <laughs> <laughs> 
Should we just do that one more time because it's just fun to watch? I think we should do it one more time so it's fun to watch. There we go. So here, from the top, set everything up. Remember this image. This is a ring pull from a soda can. Fake placing it in my pocket. Watch the deck as that ring pull begins to slowly materialize back on top where it began. Just like that, you can actually examine the ring pull. You can see it's not anything special. The deck can be fully examined. And that is the tutorial. All right, if you wanna win this gimmick, this actual gimmick from today's video, then all you need to do is hit the subscribe button and then make sure you share the link to this video on social media and tag me so that I can see that you've shared it. Then I'll check your name, check that you subscribe on YouTube, and I'll announce the winner on Tuesday. I'll use some website to randomly generate the winner from all the names that have been put in, and I will choose the winner on Tuesday and ship the gimmick to wherever you are in the world. But that's it, this is this week's Tutorial Tuesday. It's a bit of a fun one. I, I, I love an interesting build of a gimmick, and what I wanted to show was a more of an exploration into not your standard flap cards or just gimmicks that everyone else builds. I think it's interesting to explore different concepts and ideas and just using some simple things that we all have at home, you can create some very strange pieces of magic, some really interesting visuals. And, uh, and I think you can take this concept and you can apply it in so many different ways. And also you don't have to use uh, ring pieces or ring pulls. I kept saying ring pieces because I just thought it was funny <laughs> to abuse myself. But you can make it. Uh, you can make it look like a, a key or anything that's silver. You can make it kind of look like a coin or a washer. You know, like a washer from some sort of uh, like mechanics set. Anything that's silver, uh, and you can actually do this with some detail on the object. Like if you get the uh, phantom card and print onto it, like a, for example with a coin, if you get a sticker that's clear but has like the eagle of a quarter printed on just the, just the black ink of it. Just the black ink of an eagle printed on a trans, like, to make basically a transparent sticker. That would hide in the back design of a, of a playing card so that if you just have a circular disc appear, it would look more like a quarter is emerging. I know that sounds kind of out there and I'll probably make a video for you one day to show you more of a close uh, sort of understanding of that, but just just explore the concept and take it as far as you can. But anyway, I'll see you guys on Thursday for the weekly live magic performance, and I'm really excited for this week's uh, this week's Thursday video with Kaylee because I've I, I hope it is, but not a brand new effect. I come up with an effect that's a that's that feels fucking awesome. Like it's a, it's an awesome trick to perform, and I'm gonna show. Kaylee, she's gonna rate it whether she's fooled, entertained, or she thinks it's creative, bonus points, as we do every week. But then I'm gonna explain it. So for the first time ever on a, on a, on a Thursday, I'm gonna perform a trick that I've created and explain it after it's been rated by Kaylee. So come back on Thursday, and as always, I'll see you on Sundays for the live Sunday session. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, folks, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Peace.